Hey guys, Dean Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We're going to get right to it in this one. We've got a lot of work to do. So welcome to the first of two parts of the Mega Man finale. This is the first half of the Sigma Fortress stages. We're being escorted in by none other than our buddy Zero, who's going to run point for us and we're going to Coming through the back as we always like to do. We always love to take things from behind, so that'll be good for us. So this is kind of the culmination of showing off everything you've learned. In this episode, we're going to show off a few of the new fully charged weapons, which you can do now that we have the Super X Buster from Flame Mammoth. This spot in particular is incredibly useful to power up your rolling shield. We got from our armadillo. When you fire that one up all the way, fully charged, you'll have a shield that will protect you from everything incoming. As long as you charge it up all the way. However, you won't be able to use any weapons while currently involved in the shield. However, there is going to be a similar effect that we'll see later on from a different weapon where you are invincible. It's sort of like a shield and you will be able to use weapons. So it looks like we've got another encounter here with Super Power Ranger Vile. Zero's gonna go and chase him down on up ahead and we'll play catch up. Sounds like this uh, attack that we heard has got some mustard on it. We're going to switch to our rolling shield, and you'll see why in a moment. It's a preemptive choice. It's a good one. But it looks like Vile got the best zero. He's trapped him in some sort of containment device. And he's trying to gaslight us into not attacking. But Zero, ever the confident one, encourages us to never back down. So Vile's still in his mech suit. Similarly to the beginning of the game when... We were facing Vile in the entry stage. You won't be able to do anything to him in his current state. So I recommend just running into him, taking some damage if you can. People that speedrun Mega Man X will usually make sure to take three quarters health damage. Prior to this point, I didn't do that because I'm not speedrunning this game, nor could I. So I'm just going to go ahead and intentionally let Vile get the best of me here. And once you get down to most of your health being away, he'll shoot you with his Ego Waffles and trap you in delicious electrified syrup. But that wasn't enough to keep Zero down, so he's gonna go ahead and break free. No one enslaves Zero and gets away with it. And it looks like Zero is going to sacrifice himself for us, I guess. Well. It was enough to take out the carrier, but it wasn't enough to take out Vile, so that's not good. We'll have to make sure that that wasn't in vain. So switch to the uh, the rolling shield prior to the fight. It just saves you a second. Somehow X magically breaks free of Vile's grip, gets all of his energy back. I'm not entirely sure how that happened or where it comes from. Who knows? It's not really expressed, but Vile is still very cocky and very, very weak to our rolling shield. So every big boss in the Sigma stages has some sort of a weakness to it, much like the bosses did when we fought them along the way, the Mavericks. But Vile is especially susceptible. I really love that explosion animation and Sprite, by the way, looks really good. But he's very susceptible to rolling shield. They didn't even take half of our weapon energy. So we'll go ahead and check on Zero and see what happened. Apparently he's bleeding. Or maybe that's just ketchup. Ha ah, got us good, Zero. Ha ha ha. Uh, no. So it turns out that uh, when Zero sacrificed himself, he did actually overload his robot body with energy. But he does confide in us that we are 
stronger than he thought. But he still only gives us some maybe. So it's a little bit of an underhanded compliment. That's supposed to be like some sort of like a weird, like powerful moment, but it does feel kind of like underhanded with the way that they decided to showcase it. Whatever, Zero's dead. We'll avenge him. So here is the second shield type item that I mentioned before. This is the Chameleon Sting. When you charge it up all the way, it makes you invincible. Your hitbox is non-existent, so nobody can touch you. But while it does allow you to clip through enemies, it's not... It, it has a similar purpose to the rolling shield, but it doesn't give you the opportunity to really refill your health. Although, if you do it the right way, you won't need to, because I'm being a big old wiener with how I'm trying to figure this out. I like using the rolling shield, so that way when you run into enemies, usually they'll give you some sort of a weapon fill up or a health fill up. It's pretty nice. Now, like most Mega Man games, this is the first in the X series, obviously, but all the previous Mega Man games, when you would go into the final stages, you'd wind up fighting every Maverick and or Robot Master in those games all over again. It's a boss rush, which is very popular. In this case, we'll start with Boomer Quanger. And you just saw a fully charged homing torpedo. It looks like fish, which I guess kind of makes sense. We got it from Launch Octopus. But bosses are handled the same exact way. You know how to fight them now. This is your second time. You'll see all eight of them. Not in order that you did. It's just kind of random, it feels. But hey, it is what it is. Don't hesitate to use your energy fill-ups. If you're getting low, it's best to just take advantage of that. In some of these situations when you play through this game and these levels, if you die, you have to start from the very beginning of the area. The checkpoints are few and far between. And it's easier just to refill your health as you go instead of trying to brute force it. Now this part's really annoying. You've got a ton of enemies coming at you, getting all up in your business. I like using the, the tornado. Storm Tornado just kind of wipes out enemies. The only problem is it's kind of slow, frame rate's not great, and it just causes some problems. So here is, for a lot of people, a run ender. Myself included as a kid, I could never get past this part. This literally is the entire reason why I never finished Mega Man X. So here is the spider, as you can tell. I apologize in advance for those of you who have arachnophobia. But uh, yeah, this boss is an absolute pain in the butt. It's gonna shoot out its little minions. It's gonna come down across the screen. It's supposed to give you kind of a heads up with the way it puts these little green pathways. That's supposed to be kind of an idea of where it's going to go, but it's very RNG dependent, very random, very frustrating. And unfortunately, most of your items for weapons aren't going to be fast enough to do damage to it. And as time goes on, as you do more damage to it, get its health bar lower, it's going to go down faster and faster and try to ram into you. It does a ton of damage if it hits you, so just be mindful of that. Just keep your distance. The shotgun ice is really the only thing that's quick enough to catch up to it as it shoots across the screen. And its hitbox is literally that red core. If you miss, that's it. I remember having to retry this many, many times. I did a couple of practice runs of this fight, just in particular, because I knew it was going to be a butt. And it's just so frustrating and tricky. Do your best to just kind of dodge away. It loves to run into you, and it does a pretty hefty amount of damage when it does. So my recommendation of this fight, make sure that you have enough energy to keep fighting. So have a sub tank or two, and keep moving. As long as you keep moving, you should hopefully be able to dodge it. You might think that you'll be able to get out of the way if you climb up the walls on the sides. You won't. When you do that, all, you, all that will cause the spider to do is to shoot at its minions. And they'll climb down the wall and hit you for more damage. So that was a pretty clean fight. But man, this is such a headache. Especially when you're a kid and you can't figure this out. You might think a charged up X Buster might do the trick. Too slow. The pink one especially. One of the things to be mindful of the pink X-Buster is that you have to hit every hit in the barrage in order to do the damage. The blue one actually does a little more damage to the spider in this case, 
because it's just one burst instead of like 12 or 13 little ones. So Sigma Stage 2 is up next. Unfortunately, they kind of get away from the cool music of the first stage. I like the first stage's music a lot better. The remaining ones I'm not really a huge fan of. I mean, it's not bad, but that first one is just too good. Too good. So we're going to keep moving along. We got Keese. We got Ostriches. Plenty of winged creatures trying to get in our way and ruin our day. But what's nice is that you'll get plenty of opportunities to fill up your sub tanks as long as you're full health. One of the things I wish I could have shown off in this Let's Play that I don't is the Hadouken. I don't actually use that at all from here into the end of the game because it's really hard to pull off for some reason. I think it's just something to do with my controller. It doesn't really work too well. If I had a Super Nintendo controller, it might be different, but I'm using an alternative method, so it's unfortunately not equipped for that. So instead, we're just going to do things the hard way today. We're going to take out Chill Penguin, and now we actually have his weakness. We didn't before. This is the, f the fire wave that we get from Flame Mammoth, which you can charge up sort of. It's kind of tough to do because it's like a constantly being fired weapon, but as you saw there, it kind of drops. Instead of going from like a wave, it just kind of does bursts of flame. Pretty neat. But that wasn't too bad. All of these fights become exponentially easier now that you can charge up the special weapon if you need to. So the game decides to throw me a bone and let me have some fun, giving us a little mech sequence, which I think is a lot of fun. Who doesn't love a good mech fight? And what's nice is that you're not taking damage here. The mech is going to be receiving all of the deadly blows, so you can use any sort of health power up that you get to refill yourself, which is super good. Very, very handy. But you'll get to a certain point where the mech suit will falter and you'll have to hop away. That's not too big of a deal. So now we've got a bit of a split course here. You can go left if you want to. There's those platforms that we saw in the first stage. I don't really care for that too much. So I'll throw on the rolling shield and head to the right instead. It's just an easier climb, in my opinion. So if you couldn't have guessed already, this open air situation, this setting is a prime venue for our fight with Storm Eagle. Storm Eagle has one of my favorite weapons in the game with the Storm Tornado. Also one of the easiest fights in the game. Same thing, I mean, as long as you don't get hit by his dive attack, then you can really make quick work of him. I mean, the fight's already almost over, and that took barely any time at all. Pretty easy peasy. So that's two of the Mavericks, or three of the Mavericks down. Boomer Quang or Chill Penguin. Storm Eagle. We're doing okay. There's a lot of opportunities to heal yourself, which I think is really nice. Especially uh, if you do it correctly and don't run into stuff, like a Ding Dong. But yeah, alternate back and forth between the Rolling Shield or the Sting Chameleon power-up if you want to. I like the Rolling Shield if I'm low in health. I like the Sting Chameleon if it's getting kind of chunky in there. And I just don't want to have to deal with stuff. So here is a fight that's very unique and very strange. We're going to have to face our enemy here. This is Rangda Bangda. Very strange name. Sounds like a cartoon character, to be honest. So Rangda Bangda has all kinds of things that we're trying to deal with here. It's got three eyes that do different things. A green one, a red one, and a blue one. The green one will fire single shots. The blue one just kind of bounces around. And the red one will fire a an array of shots. And then in the middle, we got to take on its big old schnoz. Rang the bang does pretty nosy. The red eye is definitely the one that's going to cause you the most trouble. You can use pretty much any combination of weapons. I like using a combo of the storm tornado and then the homing torpedoes. They're pretty useful, especially for the eyeballs because of how much they move around. And as you take down the various visual elements, Rangda Bangda will start to uh, kind of shift around 
do its best to hit you. Make sure that you stay away from those spikes in the floor. Those are a one hit kill. And if you mess this up, you will have to start over. That's a huge pain in the butt. So once again, use your sub tanks. Be mindful. Shift sides if you need to. I almost died right here. This was a very precarious situation. Thankfully, the iframe saved me. But just be careful when you get to the one side when you run out of eyes to hit. That you, uh... You don't land on those spikes for too long. It's really tough to use the Storm Tornado. It's nice because it can do multiple hits. But you have to make sure you're facing the right direction. Because if you're not, then it won't work. That's a tough side. I keep... I keep firing into the wrong direction multiple times, and that's just not going to do it. But that's it. Rang the bang da. Banged out. We have beaten off every boss so far. In Sigma Stages 1 and 2, we will take on the rest of the Mavericks and whatever else lies ahead in Sigma Stages 3 and 4 next time for the finale of Mega Man X. This has been Super Nintendo Sundays. I've been D-Mike. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye.